Uh, hi everyone, uh, and welcome to this presentation that will be about the detection of partial discharge using RF antenna. In a recent video, I talked about how we can detect partial discharge using the classical PD uh, setup uh, with some some demo. Now, this technique is very very sensitive, and we would see in the demonstration after this short presentation that. The, this technique, the classical PD setup, is much more sensitive than the RF antenna to detect the partial discharge. However, this technique is inclusive, can only be used if you are inside the lab. Now, if you are in the field and you want to detect partial discharge, you cannot have this setup uh, to detect partial discharge, then you have to use a non intrusive method. One of them is used to use the RF antenna to detect the partial discharge. So let's see how we can, uh, how we how the antenna can detect partial discharge. What should be the design criteria for the system to detect partial discharge using an RF antenna? What are the pros and cons of using the RF antenna? And then finally, I will take you to the lab and I will do a simple demonstration to show you how we can measure the partial discharge using the RF antenna. To start with, defects in the insulation system can take different forms, cavity, corona, uh, tree, or surface discharge, or some other forms. Now, once you start to have these partial discharges inside the insulation system, an electromagnetic wave will be start to be produced coming from the source of the partial discharge. Now, it depends if the partial discharge is internal or external. Of course, there will be some different forms and values or quantities of attenuation for this RF uh, or this uh, radio frequency uh, or electromagnetic waves. Now, if we have an antenna, uh, this antenna could be for outdoor insulation system like this one, or if we insert it inside the device, like a transformer or GIS, then it can detect this emitted electromagnetic waves. And once we detect those waves using the uh, antenna, all we need is a data acquisition, an oscilloscope, so that we can basically present or show the result on those data acquisition system. Now, here's something very important we have to pay attention to, that the frequency of the partial discharge, depending on its type, it goes from megahertz, tens, hundreds of megahertz, to gigahertz range. So when you select your antenna, you have to use the same bandwidth so that you will be able to detect these partial discharge. And more important than that, you have to select also your data acquisition system so that it can also capture this high frequency signal. So, for example, you cannot use an oscilloscope with a bandwidth of, let's say, one megahertz or less than that or a bit more than that. You will, you will not detect most of the energy of the partial discharge. So, that matching between the source of the partial discharge, the sensor, which here is the antenna, and the data acquisition system is extremely important. Now, this technique has certain advantages and disadvantages. So some of the advantage is a very safe method. As you can see here, you are far away from the source of the partial discharge. Also, another advantage of this is can be used to determine the location. If we use multiple antennas, because the partial discharge will arrive at these multiple antenna, antennas at different times, then we can localize the partial uh, discharge uh, location. And it's very non-intrusive, except if we have to put it inside the device. As you can see here, this is the antenna used to detect partial discharge for outdoor insulators. That is completely non-intrusive. But if I have to insert the antenna inside the bushing here or, or inside the GIS system, so it is a sort of intrusive, uh, intrusive test. Again, there are certain disadvantages and limitations. The RF antenna, it can catch also any sort of noise around us. So this is one of the problems. Then you have to do some denoising techniques. 
also it needs line of sight your object that you are detecting there should be no uh, any sort of barrier between the antenna and that source of partial discharge of course it will suffer from high attenuation especially if the partial discharge is inside the insulation system finally it is a non-calibrated method because the emission that you are receiving it does not reflect actually the actual value of the partial discharge it reflects that there is a partial discharge but it does not actually reflect what is the value of that partial discharge because of the attenuation because of the distance because of the medium between the source and the antenna and because of many other reasons it's not possible to calibrate the magnitude of that partial discharge. So now please join me, I will go to the lab and we will try to basically produce a partial discharge. We will use Corona. The source, it doesn't really matter. The objective is just to show you the whole process. And I will use a, a, an antenna, a whole antenna like this one, okay? And I will use an oscilloscope. And you, I want you to watch the frequency matching between the source, the antenna, and the data acquisition system. So please join me to the lab to show you uh, this demonstration about partial discharge measurement using the RF antenna. Uh, this is the partial uh, discharge setup. So here we have the 150 kV transformer connected to this cell, and this cell here connected to a sharp point. And then here we have the RF antenna, it's a directional antenna with a bandwidth is between one to two gigahertz. Now the output of the antenna basically here is connected to an oscilloscope with a bandwidth of two gigahertz. So the frequency of the oscilloscope, the antenna are matching. Okay, so now we will start applying the voltage and you can see here because of the sharp point, we have the partial discharge start to be detected at around three kilovolt. Now, when you look here to the antenna, still it can't detect anything. What we'll do now, we'll start increasing the voltage until you start to see the pulses here. So the moment we'll start to see the pulses on the uh, oscilloscope coming from the RF antenna, we will see at what voltage level it start to detect that. Now you can see here, this is the RF in antenna uh, picking up the partial discharge. And we look here, you see that the level of the voltage is around 11 kilovolt, much, much higher than the threshold voltage for the system. And that's usually this is normal because the RF antenna are, is less sensitive than the classical BD uh, system to detect partial discharge.